FCID seizes luxury vehicle which was allegedly owned by Namal Rajpaksa. Joint opposition invited to join an SLFP government. Taxes to be imposed on foods high in sugar, salt and fats. Businessman disappears upon arrival in Trinkmali for gold auction. A very good evening to you and welcome to your prime time news. I'm Sandro Ferdinando. And I'm Jitendra Gunasena. Let's now take a look at the top story for tonight. The Progress Review Meeting of the Mahavali Development and Environment Ministry was held today under the auspices of President Maitri Pala Sirisena. The President had inquired into the progress of institutions under the Ministry of Mahavali Development and Environment in the 2016 financial year. A statement issued by the President's Media Division noted that the President had instructed officials to ensure that all allocations made for the Ministry for 2016 are utilized for appropriate projects before the end of the year. Welcome back to the news. Chief Minister of the Western Province, Isra Deva Priya, convened a media briefing in Colombo today. <laughs> The president had the backbone to say that he will be contesting under the hand symbol in the next election when 20 parties, including the General Secretary of the United National Party, were on stage. He famously said that he is ready to form a government under the Sri Lanka Freedom Party and asked everyone to join hands with him and to join the Sri Lanka Freedom Party in the endeavor. <laughs> Can anyone say that we are planning to contest the next local government election under the sworn symbol? Enough criticizing and enough of going that extra mile for the United National Party while on sidelines. I would like to kindly invite all of them in the joint opposition who love the party, those who desire to establish a government and the ones who oppose the government of a separate party and the patriots to join us in victory at the upcoming local government elections. In more local news, the Sarija Sekro, the Minister of Sports, convened a media briefing in Kurunagala today. The party's central committee must clearly take a decision regarding persons who acted against the party convention. My position is that all of them must be brought together to move forward. We must not think about pushing them out. Rather, we must think about the fact that they have been a strength in the past and we have been a strength for them as such. We must look at how we can use them as a strength in the future as well. Pastor Rajapaksa is working on a United National Party contract. He will prepare for that. This is the second time that Basil Rajapaksa has split the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. Prior to that, he contested from the Mulkirigal electorate on the United National Party ticket. He is trying to commit that sin for the second time. We will see what happens when he commits this sin. Then we can prove without a doubt as to who is pulling for the UMP. Persons who should be in a prison need not be in hospital. The case filed against former minister Rohit Abe Gunabodhana on allegations of bribery was taken up again today. The case was postponed to the 31st of September on which date written submissions are to be filed. While departing the court premises, the former minister expressed the following views. We are happy about forming a SLFP government. We are very happy, but we are not very happy about having to share it with the UNP. That is the only problem we have. We will raise both our hands even tomorrow if they decide to form a SLFP government. Speaking at an event held to mark a donation to the Yodhakandiya Nagamahavihara in Tismahrama yesterday, Minister Sajid Premdasa expressed the following views. 
After being rejected by the people, the former president went on a Padayatra from Kandy to Colombo without allowing the government which was elected to do their work. Mahindra Rajpaksa is a person who garnered hundreds and thousands of votes. Even when he lost the election, he obtained the votes of hundreds and thousands of people in the country. But the person who garnered so many votes has been deceived by various people. After going on a Padayatra, it was just a crowd of 18,000 which arrived for his meeting in Colombo. His massive public movement declined because he listened to the gossip and tattletales. He made himself politically bankrupt forever. The Police Financial Crimes Investigation Division today seized a luxury car allegedly used by MP Namal Rajpaksa. The Ford Mustang was allegedly purchased by Namal Rajpaksa in 2010. The vehicle had allegedly been used for about six years and was also sold to another individual several months ago. Officers attached to the FCID had questioned the current owner of the vehicle this afternoon. This vehicle was purchased on Namal Rajapaksa's parliament permit. Investigations are underway regarding the vehicle. There is a problem regarding the ownership of property. Can a person not purchase a vehicle with the money they earn? I'm saddened because the car has been left out in the open. This is not a vehicle that should be parked on a roadside. I'm a businessman. If I have the money, then I can purchase a vehicle. Meanwhile, former Treasury Secretary P.B. Jayasundara was summoned to the FCID today to provide a statement for an ongoing investigation. <laughs> The anticipatory bail application filed by former Chief Judicial Medical Officer Ananda Samrasekar, Sekara rather, who claims authorities plan to arrest him in connection with the disappearance of several bone fragments of rugby player Vasim Tajuddin, was taken up in court today. Investigations have brought to light that several bone fragments belonging to Wasim Tajuddin, who was allegedly murdered in May 2012, had been misplaced while they were in the custody of the judicial medical officer. In this backdrop, former chief JMO Ananda Samrasekara filed an anticipatory bail application at the Colombo Magistrates Court. When the application was taken up today, the Attorney General's Department noted that the bone fragments in question had disappeared while in Ananda Samrasekara's custody. Making submissions on behalf of the Attorney General, Deputy Solicitor General Dilan Ratnaika noted that there is evidence which indicates that the bones were taken away in a lorry and that the evidence is being recorded at present. Ratnaika objected to the granting of anticipatory bail, noting that the bones were case items and as such fall under the category of public property. Appearing for Ananda Samrasekara, President's Counsel Savindra Fernando noted that the current judicial medical officer in charge should be held accountable regarding the misplacement of the body parts. Fernando argued that it is unjust to arrest Samrasekara in connection with the incident and that the bones cannot be categorized as public property. Considering the submissions made, additional magistrate Dulani Amrasekara ordered both parties to file written submissions on the 9th of this month. Police have launched an extensive investigation into the alleged disappearance of a businessman in Trincomalee. The missing person has been identified as Mohammed Nazreen, a businessman from the Marav area in Athalagama, Bandaragama. The victim has left his home around 10.30 p.m. on Saturday saying he was travelling to Maharagama. However, from Maharagama he had travelled to Trincomalee to attend a jewellery auction at a state bank. Police investigations have revealed that 13 people, including the victim, had arrived in Trincomalee in three vehicles. The victim was last seen at the auction and had gone missing thereafter. He was at the bank for a while after which he had gone out to get himself some water. There was a colleague with him as well. He had bought a bottle of water for his colleague and some other beverages for two others inside. He went back inside and he has been missing ever since. There's no trace of what happened to him. All I ask is that my son be found from wherever he is. 
Police investigations have also revealed that Mohammed Nasreen had around 2 million rupees in his possession at the time of his disappearance. Mohammed Nasreen, the 35 year old father of two. <laughs> He called me at around 10 p.m. on Saturday. He did not call me again after that. <laughs> Details of an alleged fraud said to have taken place at the People's Bank has been reported by the Maumbima newspaper today. An IT project valued at 700 million rupees is at the center of the alleged scandal. The Ceylon Today newspaper reports that the issue was brought to the attention of the Prime Minister by two members of the People's Bank Board of Directors and that steps are now being taken by the Board to cover up the alleged fraud by preventing the flow of information in this regard to external sources. Ceylon Today also reports that affidavits stating that, quote, no member of the Board of Directors of the People's Bank has provided the Prime Minister with any information or documents of the said transaction, unquote, had been distributed among the members of the Board. The Ceylon Today report also states that this is possibly the first time in the history of the bank that affidavits are being distributed among members of the board of directors. In an interview with the Maubima newspaper, senior banker Rusri Palatennukon meanwhile raised concerns about the alleged fraud by stating that the future plans of the People's Bank, which has been drawn up until 2020, does not include this disputed IT project which aims to digitize the operations of the bank. Rusi also revealed to Maubima that softwares for the disputed project has already been purchased by the bank at a cost of 11 million US dollars. The senior banker also noted in his interview that the entire board of directors of the People's Bank should be held accountable for this alleged fraud, adding that they should all resign as the bank had failed to follow the necessary tender procedures. The 69th session of the World Health Organization Regional Committee for Southeast Asia, chaired by Minister of Health Dr. Rajita Sena Ratna, commenced in Kalam today. The 69th session saw the participation of around 200 to 250 official delegates from over 15 countries, including health ministers from the 11 member countries. The five-day event from the 5th to the 9th of September will help to showcase Sri Lanka's achievements in the health sector and the progress the country has made in socio-economic development while highlighting its tourism potential. WHO has actively supported our efforts in improving health care delivery to our people. Over the last few decades, my country has made vast strides in improving the health of our citizens. Free health service we enjoy and the continued guidance and technical support from WHO has contributed much to our success. Sri Lanka has an enviable and a well-deserved reputation in the field for health, for achieving good health outcomes at a modest cost. I do not think you will find a textbook on global health anywhere in the world that does not, at some point, cite the example of Sri Lanka. Since your government came to power, health spending as a percentage of GDP has increased significantly. It is now 2% with a plan to go up to 3%. You recognize that a dollar spent wisely on health can yield between 10 to $20 in return. Sri Lanka, you have proven that any country at any level of development can achieve UHC. And this is also the case in other countries in this region. Immunization coverage in this country has been sustained in every district at 99% for several years. And school enrollment, this is part of your excellent legacy, Mr. Prime Minister, of girls and boys, well over 99 to 100%. Adult literacy, is above 90 percent. This is the kind of country we, are, we should be very proud of and this is the kind of model that we should emulate more and more in other parts of the world. WHO has just certified, I personally has just signed, you know, that Sri Lanka has eliminated malaria and marking an end marking an end to an intensified campaign launched since 2008. So congratulations for excellent performance. At the end of the war, there are much healing to be done. 
and still there are lot more to be done in the region of psychological and psychiatric treatment. Nevertheless, when we look at the figures today, one of the issues that we have to overcome was that the spending per capita GDP, the, per, the GDP spending on health has been low. This is one of the issues that came up even at the elections. We were spending more for debt servicing than for health and education. We are slowly turning that around. Minister of Health Dr. Rajita Senaratne commented on the government's efforts to discourage excessive consumption of sugar, salt and fat. Pending decisions actually now it is pending in the cabinet for the last five weeks. And there was a cabinet uh, um, so the economic subcommittee meeting also where I attended and I argued for the 90% uh, of taxes. So even the, that was a cabinet paper, a joint cabinet paper by the president and myself. So we, are, we will be expecting to, uh, even tomorrow's cabinet meeting that it will be taken up. There are two Sri Lankas, the urban Sri Lanka with large-scale infrastructure projects like expressways and flyovers. And rural Sri Lanka where people are still compelled to use footpaths and log bridges. Many people in our country walk a fine line between life and death on precarious log bridges on a daily basis. This is a story of one of these communities. The Gummadda 100-Day Initiative. This is the village of Ittakala in Hadirigirupada, Ratnapura. On some days we come across elephants. Our lives are not secure until we are on solid land again. On rainy days the log is slippery. The villagers of Ittagala have sustained themselves for over seven decades now with produce grown in their home gardens. But even this has fallen prey to wild elephants. An even large obstacle for this community is transversing the Katupatoya. This is the only road by which they can access their village. At present, they use this rudimentary bridge to cross the river. Undertaking the crossing is a life and death gamble and many have been washed away never to be seen again. He was gone and I have not seen him since. He was my only son. Politicians have come here and laid foundation stones to build bridges, but nothing was built. We have written letters to all the ministers and all the MPs, but nothing was done. Why are they doing this? They stay in air-conditioned rooms while we live under the trees. <laughs> Hasn't the time come to address this issue? Welcome back. Now, a public awareness campaign titled Surya Balasangramya, dubbed Battle for Soul Energy, which commenced from four corners of the island, entered day four today in its journey to reach Colombo. News First is the media sponsor for the campaign, which is organized by the Ministry of Power and Renewable Energy, the Ceylon Electricity Board and the Sri Lanka Sustainable Energy Authority. The team which is promoting the campaign from Trincomalee to Colombo commenced today's journey from the Galigamo town today. The Minister of Power and Renewable Energy Ranjit Siembalapiti was present for the inauguration of the event. After departing the Galigamo town this morning, the campaign ended the day's proceedings in Kalania. The team which is travelling from Ampara to Colombo in a bid to promote the Surya Balasangrame program commenced their journey from the Ruanvela town this morning and concluded their day's journey in Maharagama. 
Solar panels are to be installed at 1 million homes under phase 1 of the program, which is being initiated in a bid to boost sustainable power generation in the country to face power challenges in the future. The team which is promoting the program from Jaffna to Colombo commenced their journey from Nigamba today and made their final stop for the day in Paliagoda. The team which is journeying from Hambantura to Colombo reached Moratua today. The island-wide program is scheduled to conclude its journey at the premises of the Banda Nayak Memorial International Conference Hall tomorrow. Uh, that make it a <coughs> now one might question as to how the public could pay for all this at once. We have spoken with banks and have created a special loan system. The Ceylon Electricity Board will come to a 20-year agreement for this solar energy panel. The home owner can enter into a 7-year repayment plan. After seven years, the CEB is ready to pay 22 rupees for one megawatt of power generated by the consumer, while a sum of 15 rupees will be paid per until 2020. The minister added that the solar panels will be provided under three categories, small, medium and large scale. 100 megawatts of power can be generated in a few years. Secondly, we can make a large saving of foreign reserves through this. Moreover, this is 100% eco-friendly. We also intend to prepare a method for the people to make an income out of this. Another important factor is that we can gain a massive strength to the balance of our country's national grid by generating power from several areas. The quantity of rice imported to the country by Lanka Satsa from July 2014 to August 2015 is considered as the largest stock of rice imported in less than a year. Investigations are underway by the Presidential Commission of Inquiry and the Police Financial Crimes Investigation Division into the irresponsible process followed when importing this stock of rice. However, suspicions have arisen as to whether Lanka Satsa or the subject ministry is in possession of the details required for the investigation process. The chairman of Lanka Satsa has failed to submit the required files and documents for the investigation to the committee appointed in October last year to investigate the matter in question. However, after an investigation spanning eight months, the investigative committee submits a report in June this year. Action TV on several prior occasions had raised the question as to what happened to that report. <laughs> We have actually already handed over the report containing the audit details to the FCID to investigate and ascertain as to where it has gone wrong. That question could be answered like this. This audit has been conducted by two retired government auditors since no one had investigated the rise imported during the previous government. When the investigation was conducted, they told us that something of this nature had occurred. So the ministry got to know of some of the facts mentioned in the report only after it was conducted. <laughs> In a backdrop where investigations in this regard should be continued, the doors of Lanka Satsa have been slammed shut on the investigative committee that reveals certain facts of which the ministry was unaware of for quite some time. Action TV will bring you more details on the contents of this 34-page investigative report in the coming days. In sports news, it's cricket. Sri Lanka's T20 captain Dinesh Chandimal announced at a media briefing held today that TM Dilshan and Kusal Janit Pereira will open the batting for Sri Lanka in the first T20 against Australia tomorrow. The two-match T20 series will work off tomorrow at the Palakali International Cricket Stadium. Speaking to the media ahead of tomorrow's encounter, Sri Lanka's T20 captain Dinesh Chandimal said the series would be dedicated to TM Dilshan, who will be playing his final T20 international in the second match. In one days and tests, he was my first captain. I'm truly happy that I'm able to be captain in his last two international games. On behalf of the team, our hope is to win both matches and give him a good send-off. We looked at Kusal over two matches in the ODIs. In the last match, too, we had to use him as a mid-order batsman, especially because of Angelo Matthews' injury. He will most probably open the batting with Dilshan in tomorrow's match. Chamar Kapukedra, Milinda Siruadhana and Sachit Sena Nayaka have been called up to the team for tomorrow's T20 encounter. 
The campus cricket world finals began in Colombo today and the team representing Sri Lanka also took to the field today. Campus Cricket World Finals 2016 The team representing Sri Lanka took on the team representing India. Batting first, India posted 169 runs for the loss of 8 wickets in their 20 overs. Omkar Kahatpe top scored with 46 runs, while G. Vimladharma bagged 3 for 33. Sri Lanka eased to the target in just 16.4 overs, thanks to a quick-fire 56 by Shahan Jai Surya. Sri Lanka beat India by 7 wickets with 20 balls remaining. Meanwhile, South Africa emerged victorious against England today after posting 199 runs for the loss of 5 wickets. England only managed to score 145 runs for the loss of 7 wickets in their 20 overs. The campus team representing UAE took on the team representing Pakistan today. Batting first, UAE posted 135 for the loss of 9 wickets. Pakistan comfortably chased down the target in 17.3 overs, losing just 3 wickets in the process. Campus Cricket World Finals 2016 Bangladesh thrashed Australia today in another match of the Campus Cricket World Finals. After bowling out Australia for a paltry 74 runs, Bangladesh reached the target in just 6.4 overs without losing a single wicket along the way. Time news for the News First team. I'm Sandhu Ferdinando. And I'm Jitendra Gurusena. Good night and take care.